Hello and welcome to this short tutorial on how to use the anti-collision modules in Kelly Down. For this tutorial we'll be using the example database that was installed with the Kelly Down application. Specifically we'll be looking at this well here which is AA10 MWD run number 2. First let's open the survey data. One option in Kelly Down allows you to see the name and the distance to the closest well. So let's look at that first. Right click on one of the columns in the survey editor and then select edit columns. We're going to add the two columns that show the closest well's name and the closest well's distance. So select those from the list on the left and then click add. Then click OK. Kelly Down takes a little while to calculate the closest well and its distance from the well you're drilling. Some of the records are marked in red. This indicates that this well is closer than 10 meters per 1000 meters of measured depth of the well we're drilling. So in this instance, this indicates that this well AA18 at 1587 is closer than 15.87 feet to the well we're drilling. And you can see here that at this depth it's actually at 12.62. You can set the alarm for calculating when this well is colored red under system settings. So now let's look at the quick scan option in Kelly Down. Go to the toolbar and click on quick proximity scan. When the quick scan module opens up, it shows a ladder plot showing all the wells that are in the vicinity of the well you're drilling. So the vertical line on the left here represents the track of the current well and the colored lines on the right indicate the wells that are in proximity with the one you're drilling. If you hold the mouse over any one of those lines on the right, it will show the name of the well and its distance and the depth on the current well. So the closest well here is AA18 and its distance is 12.62 meters at the measured depth of 587.00, which corresponds with what we saw in our survey editor. You can change the scan radius by going down to the bottom here and let's change that to 100. So now this gives a more accurate indication of how close we are to those other wells. Right now we see a ladder plot, we can also change that to a travelling cylinder plot. The travelling cylinder plot shows us a travelling cylinder. The middle of this cross here represents the well we're currently drilling and the lines to the top and bottom show the direction relative to north of the other wells in the vicinity. So this point here, this is our well AA18, and we can see that that well is to the southeast of the well we're drilling, and its distance is 14.04 meters at that point. We can change this to high side reference, and now this is that well AA18, and we can see that the well is above us and slightly to the right. Click on the last survey option and this shows us the vicinity of the wells at our last survey point. And our last survey depth is currently 1587 meters. And once again, we can see exactly where the other wells are in vicinity to the one we're drilling. So AA18 is 12.62 meters and the high side direction is 12.6 degrees. And we have another couple of wells to the left of us, 78 meters away and a couple of wells to the right of us that are about 80 meters away. If you would like to see how those wells are approaching us, you can use this slider to traverse up and down the depth of the current well that we're drilling. So we started drilling at 749. At that depth, AA18 was 15.3 meters away from us. And now at the end of our drilling, that well is 12.6 meters away from us. So now let's look at the Kelly Down anti-collision. Kelly Down uses the industry standard anti-collision calculations. It uses the ISCWSA error models to define an error ellipse that it then uses to compare with the error ellipses down adjacent wells and compare for proximity. You can see which surveys have been used in the current well by clicking on the survey tool program button. So for this well, which is AA10 MWD run number two. From surface, there's a north seeking gyro down to 300 meters and then MWD survey from 300 meters to the bottom of the well. So click on the proximity scan button on the toolbar. Let's take a look at each item on the toolbar. The first item is the scan method. Typically, the scan method would always be minimum distance. That's the most popular scan method in use in the industry. 
The scan reference can be either high side or north. If the well is vertical and you're scanning against other wells in the vicinity, it's better to use the north reference so that you can tell whether the adjacent wells are to the north, south, east or west of you. But because this well is completely almost horizontal, it's better to use the high side reference so we can see from the scan whether the adjacent wells are to the left, to the right, above us or below us. We want to scan the entire profile. If you click on a section of profile, you can set the scan start and end measure depths. You might do this if the profile consists of a vertical section and then a build and a horizontal section. It would be confusing to show the vertical section relative to north because the high side would be changing all the time. Or you can simply scan the last depth or any other depth down the profile. Generally, you would select the entire profile. You can set the scan interval and also a scan radius. If you're scanning a huge project with hundreds or possibly even thousands of wells, it's best to set a scan radius. If you set a scan radius, Calidan will eliminate any wells that couldn't possibly be a collision risk. Under report options, you can select the type of report you want to see. Typically, you would select either with clearance factors based on lip separation, either portrait or landscape. The only difference between the two is that the landscape option has one or two extra columns. The other option is to produce a report that's very similar to the compass report. You can also set a maximum clearance factor, so you don't want to see any wells that have a clearance factor of, say, greater than five, because that means that those wells are certainly not a risk. Because we've already set a scan radius, we'll leave that as unchecked. You can print a fly sheet that describes the report and all the information that you've used to create the report. Then you have the choice of a summary report or a detailed report. A summary report will print a one or two page report showing all the wells that come within the scan parameters. You'd normally use that as a first pass to check if there are any collision risks at all. A detailed report would be used just to scan one or two wells that are coming within a close proximity of the current well. And then there's a choice of different plots, and we'll look at those later when we see the report. At the bottom there are scan options. You can include data from surface, in which case the start measure depth will always be zero. In this case we're going to leave it at 748.66 because um, this well is completely horizontal from that point. You can exclude duplicate stations on child or parent profiles. This means that if you're scanning a well that is made up of more than one drill section, you wouldn't get duplicated data where the sections overlap. You can also exclude all parents and child surveys of this one, and you can also exclude all proposals if you want. If you don't check this box, you can exclude all proposals associated with surveys. So this means that Kelly Down will scan against all surveys but if there isn't a survey for a particular well, it will scan just the proposal if a proposal exists. We're going to exclude all proposals in this case. You can enter a watermark that appears behind the text on each page. You could enter something like draft copy in here just to alert people the fact that this isn't the final copy of the anti-collision report. And then you can select how you want to base the summary. So you can base the summary on the minimum distance between two wells the minimum separation between two wells or the minimum clearance factor. The most critical aspect is the clearance factor. So it's normally recommended that you select this option. If you're sending the data directly to a printer, you could set the number of copies that you want to have printed. And you can also set the start page number. If you select zero for a page number, page numbers will not be printed on the pages of the report. There's also a filter at the bottom here um, that you can use to scan or not scan certain wells, but this isn't normally used. Generally, you would want to scan all the wells that are selected in the Database Explorer. Finally, at the bottom of the dialog, a message shows you how many of the wells in the current project are going to be included in the scan. So because we've selected to um, exclude parents and child surveys of this one, then one of the surveys isn't going to be scanned, and that's the parent of this one. If I uncheck Exclude All Proposals, and this box here, then everything in the current project will be scanned. But we're going to exclude all proposals associated with surveys, and also 
exclude the parents and children of this survey. You can send the report directly to the printer if you like, or you can preview the report on the screen. So that's what we'll do now. A message shows you that it's calculating proximity. And this might take some time depending on the size of the project. If you choose to include a fly sheet, then the fly sheet is printed first. It contains information about the company and the well and the survey date, and then details about the type of scan that was performed, the scan range and the scan radius. For this example, we've set the scan radius to unlimited. The second page contains information about the well and other pertinent information that's extracted from the database. The next section describes the type of scan that was performed on the data. Then there's information about the survey tools that were run in the reference well, the well that's being drilled. And then at the bottom, you see the numerical data for the scan that was performed. So this particular report contains the well and survey name, the measured depth, down the reference well, the measure depth down the offset well, the well being scanned, and then the distance between the centers of the two wells, then the distance between the ellipses for the two wells. And finally, there's a separation factor. And if the wells came close to each other, then depending on the warnings that were set in system settings, there are warnings based on the value of the clearance factor or separation factor. So you'll notice that some of the lines are colored a dark red and some a lighter red. Firstly, the lines that are colored white are considered to not be at any risk of a collision. The lines colored light red means that the separation factor falls between 1.25 and 1.5 in this example. This means that we're warned to advise and monitor the separation between the wells in more detail as we drill ahead. The darker red means that uh, we should execute shut-in procedures. This is when the separation factor is between 1.25 and 1 in this instance. And the dark red line means that the ellipsoids are overlapping. The separation factor is below 1.0 and we should stop drilling and take action to prevent the wells from coming any closer to each other. This could mean plugging back and drilling a sidetrack or surveying the other wells in more detail. One difference between a Kelly Down report and a compass report is that Kelly Down uses the absolute separation factor. This means that the value between the two ellipsoids on the well uh, is the absolute separation between those ellipsoids. In compass, they typically use the pedal curve, which is an approximation that speeds up the anti-collision calculations. But in Kelly Down, we use the absolute separation distance, which is more accurate. Another thing to note is that in Kelly Down, instead of showing the overlap distance of the two ellipsoids, if the ellipsoids are overlapping, Kelly Down shows the percentage of the volume of the overlap of the ellipsoids. So for instance, on AA08, the ellipsoids are overlapping by 5%, and the clearance factor is calculated by subtracting that 5% from a value of 1. So 5% equals 0.95 clearance factor. The next page shows a description of the data that was used to perform that scan, followed by the ladder plot. A ladder plot shows the distance between the two wells in graphical form. The line down the left of the chart represents the well that we're drilling, and the distance between that line and any of the lines showing the wells is the distance between the center of the current well and the center of the adjacent well. For instance, in this example, well AA18 is very close to our reference well, and the distance between centers is about 12 meters at the bottom. The shaded area represents the combined distance of the two ellipsoids. So if we look at this well, AA17, the shaded area is here. This means that the separation between the ellipsoids on the reference well and the ellipsoid on the adjacent well is about 130 meters. The next page shows a clearance factor plot. The dark lines down the left-hand side, this darkest red indicates the area where the clearance factor is below one. And if any of these lines cross that area, you're advised to stop drilling immediately and take evasive action. The next lighter shaded area is the area where if the line crosses over, you should execute shut-in procedures and take action to prevent the wells from closing 
together any further. And the next lighter shading area, in this case, the area below 1.5 clearance factor, means that you should advise the customer and monitor the drilling process to make sure that the clearance factor doesn't reduce any more. The final page contains a travelling cylinder plot. In this case, the reference is high side, and you can see the wells that are to the left of the well we're drilling and to the right of the well we're drilling and wells that are above. It's always a good idea to scan the whole project for anti-collision. But after you've done a summary report, you can also do a detail report on all the wells that come within the critical distance of the well you're drilling. So let's set the scan radius to 100 meters and we'll set a minimum clearance factor of two. And this time we'll create a detail report. This time we'll set a report with clearance factors based on lip separation. Click on the preview button. So the fly sheet is displayed and then a detailed report of all the wells with all records that come within a clearance factor value of two. So here you can see the clearance factors on the right hand side uh, and it starts at 1.99 and the closest clearance factor is 1.07. So these are the detailed reports of each well in the vicinity and this one well AA08 shows where the ellipsoids for both wells are overlapping and you can see that the clearance factor is 1.0 means the ellipsoids are just touching and then at the bottom there's an overlap of 5% of volume. Thank you for watching this tutorial.